Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And we've got a market that is, well, a little volatile. 2.3 trillion, so the money is staying in the market, but uh, it's shifting between Bitcoin and the altcoins rapidly. And uh, quite, quite amazing the way it is moving because just two hours ago, only 16 out of the top 100 by market cap, we're in the red. And now we've got a, a move to about close to 50% are in the red. So just hang on tight. You can see here that Bitcoin is currently trading at 55,368. Mm, the technical score is neutral. So it's, it's that situation where the market really can't decide what it wants to do. All right, jumping to some really interesting stories about XRP, XDC, about stable coins. Um, let's just get right to it. Charles Gasparino of Fox Business, he is fully engaged in the SEC versus Ripple and also with John Deaton representing, and we need a drum roll, please representing 42,000. Look at that. This is a beautiful card that Stedis did. It's frameable, in my opinion. The XRP Army versus the SEC. 58% have signed up on that support Google Doc that John gives everyone. That is attorney John Deaton. And uh, so 58% are from the U.S. and 42% uh, are from other countries. So we've got 55 countries in all. I mean, the coverage is quite remarkable. Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Norway, Japan, Greece, Russia, Argentina, Croatia, Belgium, Israel, Denmark, Vietnam, Thailand, Turkey. You get the picture. I'm going to give a personal shout out, however, to Kenya, Liechtenstein, and Egypt, because I know they're is XRP Army there. They talked to me in the comment section on my YouTube channel. So come on, guys, get going. All right, this is really turning into a big story. Really, it is. I mean, there's going to be an additional write-up coming from Charlie later on this week. But just hear a little bit of when he was speaking on Fox Business. Sorry, you need to better understand what he says. But the, but a big story here, okay, with him weighing in on this, is the regulation of crypto, whether the SEC is picking winners and losers in crypto, uh, given a free pass to Bitcoin, Ethereum, but not Ripple and XRP. And I'll tell you, our viewers who are holding these things are going nuts because they don't know which security net system yeah. is going to be deemed a security, which, which crypto is going to be, and, and, and they go, they decline in value because uh, you can't trade it or you need to get, you need to All disclose right. stuff. It's, it's a very complicated situation, which he gets it. He gets it. He really gets it. And that is really correct. Uh, the SEC is not there to pick the winners and the losers. The Wall Street Journal criticized Gensler big time on Friday. This is with a move that he made that was supposed to help protect the small investor, but it has totally disrupted their trading stocks and bonds on the OTC. This new rule went into effect in September and it prevents brokers from providing public price quotes. Can you imagine? The liquidity has completely dried up, stopped, and liquidity is the lifeblood of a healthy market. This new rule was half half baked, which just proves this guy is not protecting the small retail investor. And if this is the kind of action that he takes and he doesn't comment, they asked him for a comment, he wouldn't comment. The smaller traders have been totally pushed out. Protection, my ass. And I don't swear often, but at this time, that's how I feel. All right, we're going to move to a Zinfin XDC development. They unveiled their multi-platform software developer kit. 
This is often called an SDK. And what this means is that apps will be able to incorporate all types of the XRC tokens and smart contracts. This connects real world Binance to DeFi markets. And that you're also looking at the ability to use these tokens in trade finance for recording payout obligations. This is turning out to be an incredible hybrid blockchain. And even Quincy, our, our Quincy got a quote in this article. The well, reason why I really want to bring that up is because I have the CEO of Globiance coming onto the channel in one hour exactly. I have to really prepare. Uh, he is building on Zinfin. And so we're going to talk about many things that he's doing. Uh, he's got something very, very exciting in the way of a, a, a DEX. So um, there's just a lot going on in his world. When you take a bank and you merge it with a crypto exchange, <laughs> you've got a, a lot happening. So look forward to that. And when we look at stable coins, well, gosh, we're going to talk about stable coins with Globiance because he uses them. But check this out. An article by Jump Capital talks about the impending rise of the multi-billion dollar stablecoin market. And it's not about if, it's even closer than when. It is now. And can you believe this? This is today, Terra. You can find them at, at Terra underscore money on Twitter. Have a look of, at the annual percentage yield with their stable coin, 19.47%. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of uh, talking heads in the way that uh, this is really disrupting the legacy banks. And, uh, you know, I, I know Gensler wants to come in and regulate. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's not going to be able to regulate the world, nor is he going to be able to regulate DeFi. Uh, this is this is just, you know, they're going to have to adjust and change and reinvent themselves. That's all there is to it. All right, we're jumping to the fluff. No, we're not. We're going to just play a quick, quick clip here. This is very interesting. I had a conversation with uh, karma coverage and he has been in the xrp community get this since 2013 he's had conversations with yeah all of you name it all of the uh team that began uh back in 2012 2013 and he is a huge fan of the xrp ledger because he really understands how powerful it is. I'm going to play this one portion. It's a minute and 14 seconds long. It's from a discussion we had that lasted about 40 some minutes. This is a this is a part where he's breaking down the difference between centralized networks, the Bitcoin network, and then the XRP ledger. Here we go. And the reason I say that is you have the server nodes. These would be your validators. Um, but then you have your wallet holders and the thing that so impressed me with, with XRP ledger was the trust lines, the order books, you can have all these different types of assets and, and there's ability for the individual wallet holders to create like a network on top of, or inside of the, the XRP ledger, uh, that really doesn't involve the server nodes. So when you're talking decentralization, uh, I think it's interesting that Bitcoin says decentralized and, and XRPL is a decentralized ledger technology. I mean, they really kind of nailed it uh, for distributed ledger technology. I mean, they really kind of nailed it because there's so much more of a network with XRPL. It, it's it's in a class of its own compared to Bitcoin. I mean, it's just not even. And, um, and all of the, the, financial engineering that these connections, the, the capacity to have these connections enables is, is where the real power of XRPL that really has not been unleashed yet. Yeah, so we still have yet to fully unleash all of its capabilities. And as we know, with the federated side chains, that is going to be a reality. 
Uh, it's, um, mm, this is just such an unbelievably exciting space to be in. All right, now we're going to jump to the fluff. And I just wanted to show you a picture of the beautiful new personal jet that was unveiled by Honda. Look at that, Honda, the car making maker making jets now and uh this is funny uh, well it's probably not funny to the person that it happened to but i guess maybe i smiled maybe i shouldn't there is a tweet out there by tarai kun who was living in the united states he actually lived there for 25 years after going to school he stayed uh, he's now back in japan but he uh, was there for 25 years. And he tells a story of how he met a girl in, in his class uh, who showed off her tattoo. And it was of a uh, kanji character. And he was a little surprised because uh, she told him the story that um, she chose one of the three characters that the tattoo artist gave her to choose from. She thought all three of them meant innocent. Uh, but when you combine kanji together, let me just show you here. When you combine kanji together, it changes the concept and the meaning. What you have here is this first kanji, which is mu. Mu means like to be absent of something. And then the middle kanji is ja in this case, which uh, means evil. And this one is ki, which means spirit. So it's the absence of an evil spirit, which then translate in English loosely to innocent. Well, she thought that she was being given a choice and she chose what she believed to be the most beautiful of the three kanji characters. And she chose the middle one, which by itself means evil. So here she had uh, thought about having this great tattoo saying that, uh, you know, innocence, and it meant the exact opposite. So it's just a warning, everybody, be extra careful that you have somebody who is a native speaker. <laughs> Double check before you tattoo your body. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, he put in there that it was very abenai, very dangerous, these tattoos. And I'll leave you with a picture of a cabbage. Yes, a real size cabbage. This is the size that's grown up on the island of Hokkaido in Japan. And this was a picture that was taken recently. Wow, yeah, pretty cool, huh? That is a lot of cabbage. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update with a very, very special guest. I have with me karma coverage. You won't believe it. This is somebody, I mean, there are OGs in this space, and then there are people who even predate that. And I can tell you that karma coverage is been in the XRP space since 2013. Uh, you can see that on XRP chat, he joined September 10th, 2015. What preceded XRP chat was XRP talk all the way back in 2013. He has really been around and he has a collection of knowledge that is very, very interesting. He also has this focus as of late about China and the future of money with the infrastructure that they are building and what is available in the West. And he also has a really good feel for the geopolitics and has brought to my attention a video that I actually focused in on that is the FBI Ripple Asia representative who was in an interview on Thinking Crypto with Tony. And there was a portion of that video that really spoke to me and I found out today it is very much indeed what Karma Coverage is talking about. We're going to let him really talk about the topology of XRP, Bitcoin, the correspondent banking, and why it is so important 
for the XRP topology to succeed. It all pertains, you know, to this network and the unique node list, the validators that are trusted so that they are not going to collude. And independently, they agree on a new ledger version. It is very, very genius in the way it is laid out. So please welcome and let's just hear what Karma Coverage is going to bring us today. Welcome. Thank you for coming on the channel. Hey, thanks, Siri. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, I've loved your videos, by the way, from the beginning. I recognized you had some financial astuteness uh, before you found Ripple. Um, and yeah, I guess a little about me. I'm a financial engineer, stumbled on Ripple back in early 13, late 12, something like that when I was in the insurance world. Uh, I was looking to create a P2P insurance uh, uh, business, which is the namesake Karma Coverage. And um, once I saw the technology, I was just speechless. And it's so powerful. Um, so I, I really dug in and, and tried to just understand as much as I can. Um, before that, I've been following China's efforts to dethrone the U.S. dollar as global reserve, probably going back to around 2000. And uh, I've seen them do everything from stand up. Uh, they tried to stand up a competitor to the IMF. I believe that was in like 2005 or six, somewhere in there. Uh, it didn't work. Um, I've seen them, you know, in the Bitcoin world, as I'm going to hopefully explain, uh, I've seen them push really hard on Bitcoin. I, I think they see that as another attack vector against the dollar. Uh, and so I've sort of been watching this for a while. And, um, I think the real crux of it all comes down to the topology of the international monetary infrastructure. And obviously what Ripple is working on with an internet of value is an entirely new type of infrastructure for the monetary international monetary system. And um, it's exciting, but I think it's a under uh, appreciated aspect of what's going on here in the overall picture. And so hopefully I can shine some light on it here in the next few minutes. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I kind of agree with you. Um, uh, one good development that we have seen just in the last couple of days is the APEC meeting that took place with a lot of developers who are now being gathered uh, to build out on the XRP ledger and also invite other developers to come. So I think that um, th those kinds of efforts are really, really important. And I think we're going to see a lot of new development for sure. And so it's, it is very, very exciting. And then, and I think that a lot of people are interested in the technical side because it is one of the true uh, freestanding values of XRP is that it is the native token on this incredible network. So what we should do is let's take a look at that video. It's just a little over two minutes long. It's with Adam Trademan, he is the representative for the SPI Ripple Asia. It's that video that really, wow, caught my attention. And now I understand it caught your attention. And I think we're gonna be able to explain why what he says is so important, right? It's not a joke. Yeah, okay. So let's, let's get that up and let me bring it to the beginning here. And let's go ahead and listen to Adam. 